Good morning. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, 50 years of I study in Guru and the past and present research, modeling, forecast, and future prediction. So uh, a lot of contributor, uh, particular, uh, well, at least there, and Ray Essel, uh, when I talk, uh, his position, he retired, but he came in voluntarily and helped me to continue to process the ICE data in order to keep the data smooth transition. So that is a uh, 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 Jim Kessler talk about. So uh, today I'm talking about numerical modeling and forecast. So I outlined the uh, the period of the ice research into one, two, three, four. And the first one is uh, a race legacy. And so, and then uh, I start from 27, uh, or 2007, or uh, 2007, and all the way to now. And Ray used, used a, a satellite, uh, measurement to configure the grid grid and then project the ice, national ice center data into the grid uh, grid. So that is the, he had been uh, working on this in addition. And he also worked on the uh, teleconnection uh, impact on the grid ice cover by uh, individual teleconnection impact. And he published a lot of paper and so I think this is a legacy. Uh, this is why we, we can continue uh, to keep the data, maintain the data, and also uh, using model, uh, to use the data to validate our model. So uh, you can see since 1973 and to now, and the ice cover decrease 5% per year as a uh, uh, decade uh, for uh, like, like a Jim uh, pointed out. So I'm not going to talk about it too much. And uh, since I moved in and uh, we continue to maintain the ICE Atlas database and Jim at the time was uh, uh, my summer intern. So, and so he grows uh, uh, rapidly and can handle uh, the ice uh, process and analysis. In addition, we did the teleconnection pattern uh, analysis using NAO and ENSO to, uh, to, to form formulate the regression model for seasonal forecast. That's a bye bye. Uh, and then uh, we uh, we we found that NAO has a linear relationship to our ice cover. However, ENSO have a quadratic nonlinear relation uh, to uh, gray ice cover that increased the complexity of our analysis. And 2007, and we also work on the uh, ice modeling. Uh, I apply our couple ice ocean model to the Great Lake ice circulation model with uh, David uh, Swap. And then we start to do the Lake Ely and expand to five lake by uh, Swap and Great Lane. So this is the uh, first time ever we apply ice model into the Great Lake and put into uh, now cast forecast system into swaps uh, really cost of forecast system for ice. Uh, he had put the model for, uh, for uh, really cost forecast system for 10 years, but no ice cover. And we now put it. And we also, because we have an ice cover, ice model, we can run the model over the winter rather than uh, every year you have to reset uh, the initial condition uh, Right, right now, even 
and we will show, see later, we can integrate the model for 120 years without any stopping. And this is, a, uh, we add the ice forecast into uh, Swap's uh, really coastal forecast system uh, together. Then we, uh, we did the forecast, five days forecast, uh, ice forecast, compare reasonably with the, um, with the, 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 the measurement. And we, and from 2012 to 2020, uh, we still uh, maintained ice, well, continue, but this time uh, we modify as uh, Jim already talked about. But right now we add AMO, Atlantic Mountain Decade Oscillation and Pacific Decade Oscillation into the regression model and to provide seasonal forecast as well. We found AMO has a linear relationship into the ice cover, but PDO still have uh, both linear and quadratic. So we have to configure both nonlinear and linear regression model uh, to reasonably uh, project, uh, project, project seasonal ice cover. And uh, and we also at the time we developed the FVCAM CICE, and this is the file lake model uh, for the I believe the first time. And this model uh, original FVCAM uh, the New Mexico is not stable. But we, through effort, we modify, totally modify the numeric scheme, make the numeric scheme mutually stable. So I think that is the, uh, the, the simulation of 2014. And so I think that this our uh, achievement. And then during this time, and the second generation of Greatly cost forecast system is uh, generated by, uh, by by Eric Anderson and Ayumi, and after some sometimes a development, uh, so provide seasonal forecast. However, and the forecast uh, ice is not as good as the four generation so far. So uh, NOS uh, turn off the ice forecast because the ice grow uh, into a 14 meters thick. So I think that is that we need to do a lot of work here. Then uh, the new arrow come, <laughs> came in 20, 2021 to 2024. And uh, our director uh, helped me to earn uh, OAR Ocean portfolio project we call the Greenlake Earth System Model project, and this project, and uh, we use Evicam CICE and Atlantis, and you can see the uh, Lutfor uh, talk. And we are not able. Uh, we 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 not only uh, hand cast the um, more uh, hand cast the. Uh, uh, the, the ice cover and 3D ocean uh, from 1979 to 2021 without stopping. So running, no data simulation. And uh, David Cannon also can uh, project uh, downscale of the CMX6 to force the model from 1979 all the way to 2100 because our model is neutral stable, no amplification, no, uh, no damping. And then uh, another exciting <laughs> project is uh, FVCAM CICE Swarm wheat model. Original wheat model is uh, running, was run uh, separately, but right now we run this model 
these three models all together in the same time step, for example, 10 seconds, they, are in, they interact uh, every 10 seconds. So I think that is the uh, uh, great achievement. And this project was initiated uh, by, uh, by, by, by GROW, by the director. Uh, they gave me the, at the time, I, my funding was very, very low. And uh, Debbie and uh, Jesse gave me a postdoc and, and said a postdoc. And then we hired a postdoc to implement this model, to develop this model. We finished the, you see the weave and ice uh, coupling. And ice, it induced a uh, weave attenuate, attenuation. Everyone knows physically, right? You have an ice cover damping the, uh, damping the weave. And weave also can break the ice. So we don't, we haven't done this yet. We are working on this. And so this is the physical we, we, we understand, but we have to implement the numerical uh, the, 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 uh, formula into the model. So that is a challenging, this uh, cutting edge. Then how can we do the, we break ice into small pieces, this is a two week coupling feedback. You can see this feedback, once we have a, a small ice floor and then enhance later, uh, well, start from less ice. And then we have large wind fetch and strong wave, stronger wave, uh, enhance ice breaking. And then ice break the floor into small floor and increase the latter uh, area and increase the melting. So that is a positive feedback. Then we have, uh, we have to formulate it into our model, ice breaking criteria when wave energy exceeds a criterion energy and then it break the ice into small and then and floor side dependent letter melting. So uh, I will I have a detailed talk tomorrow uh, at nine on this. So now it's a three model running together. The upper one is a, a width, a width high and direction and ice cover and ice velocity. The low one, you can see the blue, where the ice edge, where, where, the, where the weave break the ice into small flow on the ice edge. So that the area increased the uh, lateral melting. Then David Cannon and his postdoc and the, we used the uh, uh, AVOX uh, measurement in Lake Ely. And that is also funded by the uh, base fund by the director. And you can see the left up, up left. This is the one with uh, one with a coupling, which means only with the uh, ice cover damping the width. So that means you see, and the ice cover is not open in the middle of the winter. But if you look at the right hand side, the upper one, and the same period with the two week coupling, this two week coupling in the middle of the winter, the weave can break the ice. Uh, uh, I think uh, because of the uh, atmospheric forcing. So summary and future effort. Uh, the first, uh, in the 50 years, the first 33 years, Ray S.O. legacy, he lay, lay down the foundation, ice atlas database and ice pellet connection pattern uh, research. Uh, however, it's a individual uh, teleconnection. And uh, in the next uh, 16 years, uh, we have a three phase. One is uh, 
we continue, we all, in all these three, three phase, we always continue uh, uh, to maintain uh, the, the ICE database uh, like uh, Jim introduced. And we do the first ICE modeling and transition in transition to the uh, David Swap's query coastal forecast system. I think that system worked very, very well, uh, not only in ocean and also in the ice. And 2012 to 2020, the eight years, and we implement, we implement four teleconnection pattern into regression model to do the seasonal forecast. So that is also very, very important, uh, also first ever uh, for the Great Lake. And we developed FDCOM, CICE, and Phylic at the same time. And then uh, uh, Eric Anderson transitioned the uh, FDCOM, CICE into the Great Lake Coast Forecast System. So however, uh, we still need uh, some work uh, to imp improve it. And 2020 to 2024 right now, and we have been developing Great Lake Earth System model using FVCOM, CICE, Atlantis, fish model, high from low to high traffic level uh, ecosystem model uh, to do the hand cast and also do the projection. Uh, and we now, at, the, at this moment, uh, we develop three model coupling uh, running together rather than individual just uh, using coupler. We don't use coupler. Because couplers, every half an hour, you cou couple these three model together, it's not good. And uh, even GFDL, they found this problem. They want to put the width and uh, together with the ocean model because the uh, ocean and width also have a coupling. I'm not talking about uh, right now, but, uh, and so I think we developed this one. Uh, we are still doing, uh, I think these are uh, uh, very, very promising. And future effort beyond this 50 years anniversary. And Hancast and the past and present climate uh, improved the second generation uh, Great Lake Earth, uh, Great Lake Coastal Forecast System using data simulation or machine learning to improve the, I think, initial condition. Project, pro, pro, project, uh, project the future climate under a variety, well, various uh, scenario of Simic 6 downscale with uh, Great Lake uh, War. I think uh, Abby uh, Hudson is working on this one. We need, this is our weakness right now. We need to catch up. And climate ecosystem and fishery initiative and Great Lake Mamsik and, and Cobo ecosystem model and uh, will be implemented into Great Lake and will be compare with our FDCAM, CICE, and Atlantis to see which one is more suitable for the Great Lake. And then we can still can do the R to A research to application to, to the planning and management of Great Lake resources. And this have to work with the uh, social, uh, uh, social scientist and R to A to climate resilience. These two need to work with uh, social scientists. Okay, I stop here. Thank you.